after a mysterious virus wipes out all the adults, three kids must protect each other to stay alive in the cruel dystopian world. A TV news report shows an ongoing pandemic that only affects adults but is asymptomatic in pre-adolescent children. All the grown-ups are expected to perish, leaving the kids to fend for themselves. However, the disease becomes symptomatic the moment a child reaches adolescence, indicating that their lives have a time limit. As the world devolves into chaos, kids are the only remaining survivors on Earth. A lad walks through the forest while playing with his toy car, unaware that people are following him through the woods. Suddenly, two masked tweens confront him and demand he give up his bag. He tries to fight back by bringing out a screwdriver as a weapon, but when he attacks the masked girl, she retaliates by hacking him with a machete. The masked lad, Bowie, opens their victim's backpack, expecting food or water, but only finds more toy cars. Ines laughs at her companion's disappointment, but quickly shushes him when she hears a sound from a distance. Soon, they come upon an abandoned amusement park where Ines sees a girl armed with a rifle. She tells Bowie that the stranger has water bottles, but adds that she has a gun. Then, Ines tears a bloody shirt, wraps it around her knee, and prepares a branch for a walking stick. Ines tells Bowie of her plan to infiltrate the amusement park and trick the stranger, while Bowie stays put as the lookout. However, Bowie complains about being left alone in the woods, especially since they're in Blue Meanie territory. The Blue Meanies are known for slaying people by cutting their throats and wrapping up the corpse in blue sheets. Ines thinks the gang is just a rumor and mocks her friend's cowardice before moving on to execute her plan. In the park, Ines slowly limps toward the girl and asks for water, looking pitiful. Suspicious of the intruder, the girl tells Ines to meet her at the Jazz Swingers ride in three minutes. Later, the stranger offers Ines water to drink while watching her warily. The deceitful tween says she's on a lone journey to find the genius kid who invented a vaccine. Ines manages to lower the stranger's guard, so while the naive girl bends down to help Ines with her bag, she grabs the weapon and points it at the stranger. However, when Ines tries to shoot, it emits electronic sounds, and she realizes it's just a toy gun. The stranger backs Ines down, who steps on a protruding nail. She she loses her balance and falls to the ground, and the girl knocks her unconscious. Later, Ines gains consciousness, but her mind feels cloudy and she sees doctors forcefully extracting blood samples and injecting medications into her body. Finally, she fully wakes up as the girl attends to her injured foot, and demands she stop calling her kid since they're around the same age, and introduces herself as Kuan. Kuan pours liquor on Ines' wound to sterilize it, causing the injured lass to cry out in pain. Meanwhile, Bowie wakes from his slumber due to the sound, and wonders what's taking his companions so long. At the park, Kuan hands Ines a bowl of food, then searches through the intruder's backpack. Seeing that Kuan has no ill intention towards her, Ines reluctantly tells the other girl her name and asks why she helped her. In response, the quirky girl says she has a plan called Al Shifa, and she'll need people to execute it. The Al Shifa is an ancient Persian book that means the healing, and Kuan explains her objective to heal the world because there's a belief that simply hearing the Al Shifa read out loud can heal a sick man. As they try to fix the ride's power supply, Ines excitedly assumes Kuan is the genius kid she's been searching for. However, Kuan believes creating a vaccine or cure against the disease is impossible. She clarifies that her project focuses on encouraging hope and creating a haven of happiness by fixing up the amusement park. In a rage, Ines berates Kuan for her impossible dream and says the evil world has reduced every kid into savagery to survive. As Ines lectures her, Bowie sneaks up behind the naive girl and attacks her before Ines tells him not to. Kuan manages to push Bowie down to the ground to escape. Then, Ines tells Bowie they need to take Kuan out, unaware that the crafty lass is hunting them down. She first subdues Bowie, who she tricks by placing a bloody handprint on one of the rides. Distracted, the lad doesn't see Kuan attack with a baseball bat. Meanwhile, Ines hears Bowie scream and follows it. She spots Bowie's mask, and as she picks it up, Kuan suddenly appears from the shadows to knock her out. Later, Ines wakes up to Bowie 
Louis forcefully pedaling a bike to power up the machine for the water park. Kuan arrives, scolding the lad to continue pedaling, and pulls Ines towards the slide. She starts lecturing about what she wants to achieve with her project and asks Ines what she sees, to which the confused girl answers that all she sees is a moldy slide. Kuan covers the tough girl's eyes and puts a knife to her throat, demanding she use her imagination, before pushing Ines down the water slide and joining her. Ines screams in terror, while Kuan laughs maniacally. Later, they rise from the pool, then collapse in laughter on the dock, and Ines asks if they can go again. Elsewhere, a group of people clad in blue raincoats scout the area and find a toy car near the river. Later, Ines remembers the first time she took a person's life, when the gang leader Jack forced her to do it. She crumbled to the ground, her hands soaked with her victim's blood. As days pass, Ines and Kuan grow closer and have fun catching fish to fill Kuan's aquarium project. However, Bui isn't fond of the two's growing closeness, and feels that he's losing his best friend. The friendship reaches the point where Kuan feels comfortable enough to show the cabinet where she hid the original keys to the amusement park's entrances, as well as her real guns. Eventually, Kuan asks Ines if they're a team, before removing her shackles. However, before releasing the chain, Ines snatches the knife from Kuan's waist and prepares to throw it. Thinking Ines betrayed her again, Kuan closes her eyes and braces herself. However, she sees that the knife pierced a snake behind her. Ines casually picks up the snake and Kuan thanks her for saving her life. Later, Kuan brings up the blue meanies, but Ines assures her they aren't real and thinks they're a scare tactic used by some gang leader to keep his members in line. Then, Ines shares that the other members of their gang were two years older and have all turned into geezers, making Bui and herself the only people left. Kuan comments about wanting a squad and grumbles about only having her brother Luca, who hasn't returned from retrieving water from the river. She surmises he's out there distracted by playing with his toy cars. Ines' blood runs cold as she remembers the lad she slayed a few days ago. Kuan asks her if they encountered Luca along the way, and Ines lies. Later, Ines takes the keys from the storage cabinet and approaches Bui. The lad remembers being bullied by the other kids before the pandemic. Then, Ines throws him some snacks and tries the keys to set him free. She suggests he pretend to make nice with Kuan so she releases him. Yet, Bui retorts that he isn't a liar like her, angering Ines with his accusation, and she tries to leave. The lad warns her that Kuan isn't like them. Bui then remembers Ines approaching him after the other kids bullied him. Later, Ines remembers how she became the squad leader by defeating Jack and coercing Bui to slay him. Ines suddenly turns to see her reflection in the aquarium wearing the mask. Later, Ines cooks a special meal while Kuan writes in her journal. Then, the tough lass hands Kuan a bowl of food. After tasting the food, Kuan exclaims that it's delicious, but when she finds a bone, she asks if it's her pet fish. Ines reveals that she cooked the snake from earlier, making Kuan sigh in relief. That night, Kuan and Ines get back to fixing the ride's power supply. While working, Ines reveals that she was orphaned and spent her time reading books regarding the apocalypse and disaster preparedness, which is why she was ready when it actually happened. After she connects the necessary wires, Ines instructs Kuan to pull on the power switch, which to their surprise, activates the lights. Kuan jumps in joy as she hugs Ines, celebrating their achievement. Suddenly, they hear a beautiful singing voice, making Kuan gasp in amazement. Ines informs her that Bui is a fantastic singer as they stroll to where the lad is. Suddenly, Kuan's watch alarm alerts her to send a signal for her brother. After she leaves, Bui reprimands Ines for mistreating him while showing Kuan her friendly side. Then he mentions Luca, enraging Ines, who stabs a knife near Bui, with the key to his shackles dangling from it. Seeing the key, Bui guiltily swears that he didn't intend to tell Kuan about the incident. After a while, Ines finds Kuan, who just finished shooting out her fireworks signal for Luca. Noticing her friend, Kuan Kuan sadly asks if her brother is gone. Guilty, Ines tries to tell the other lass about her involvement in Luca's disappearance. However, Kuan cuts her off and rants about how much easier it's become to accept people's demises, and expresses her desire not to be forgotten. Worried, Kuan 
asks Ines if her ideas are crazy. So Ines says that they are quite bizarre, but that she's right about the amusement park being a special place. The two then hold hands, while silently acknowledging their mutual affection for each other. Meanwhile, Bowie uses the key that Ines left behind to free himself, and witnesses the lass's tender moment. He then demands that he and Ines leave the place, and makes his friend choose between him or Kuan. Irritated with Bowie's attitude, Kuan berates him, sparking a physical fight between them. From Bowie's bag, a screwdriver falls out, and he grabs it to stab her. Ines intervenes, and she's accidentally slashed on the wrist. Bowie immediately wraps a cloth around Ines's injury, while Kuan picks up the screwdriver and realizes it's Luca's weapon. She deduces that Ines and Bowie are responsible for her brother's disappearance. Betrayed, Kuan yells at them to leave, calling them sinners. At a loss for words, Ines can't do anything but listen to her angry words. Suddenly, Kuan starts to choke, while blood spills from her mouth. Ines and Bowie try to help her, but the blue meanies appear before them. Bowie immediately pulls his friend away, leaving Kuan behind. Bowie and Ines hide in the aquarium area, but the pursuers soon arrive. The two friends devise a plan to get away undetected by crawling behind the tables. However, the man finds them. As Bowie distracts him, Ines opens the storage cabinet to get the shotgun, which a woman snatches away. The mute woman grunts and shows them the whiteboard around her neck, but Bowie knocks her down, allowing the friends to escape into the woods. During their escape, Ines tells Bowie to leave her behind as her foot injury makes her a burden. However, the lad doesn't want to leave his only friend and forcefully puts her on his back. As they traverse the forest, Ines continues feeling despondent about losing Kuan and refuses to eat. Along the way, they come across a corpse wrapped in a blue sheet. Ines is shocked by the sight, so Bowie pulls her away to continue their journey, unaware that two blue meanies are tracking them down. One rainy day, Ines and Bowie stop by an abandoned house, seeking shelter from the downpour. Bowie tries to converse with Ines, but the lass is preoccupied with her sadness about Kuan's demise. The next day, Bowie takes the matter into his own hands and throws Kuan's journal into the sea, which Ines goes after. The lad follows, telling her that he won't leave her behind because she's family. Aware that Bowie can't swim, Ines pulls the unconscious Bowie to the shore. In her desperation, Ines instantly does CPR on the lad, crying in anguish. After much effort, Bowie finally breathes and gasps for air. Seeing that they're both safe after the scary incident, the two friends can't help but laugh at their stupidity. Later, Bowie asks Ines about their next plan, and the last tells him she's done running away and wants to hunt down their enemies. Soon, the blue meanies arrive and quickly take action when they hear Bowie singing, unaware that he's acting as bait. Spotting them from a distance, the lad immediately runs towards the trap. However, the trap fails after Ines activates it. Bowie attacks the man but gets overpowered, while Ines subdues the lass by putting a knife to her throat. Ines threatens to cut the woman's throat if the man doesn't let her friend go, prompting the man to comply. Having the upper hand, and Bowie snatches the gun and points it at the enemy. Seeing the pain and fear in their faces, Ines hesitates and tells Bowie to let them go. As the two friends leave, the blue meanies approach them politely, so Bowie hands her a marker. The lass writes down that they can help them, making Ines question how. However, before she can answer, Ines starts to choke and falls to the ground in pain as blood spills from her mouth. Bowie helplessly cries in fear and panic as he watches his friend about to perish. Blinded by bright light, Ines finds herself sitting beside Kuan in the amusement park. The lass asks her friend if they're deceased, and Kuan answers that they're in a suspended state. She tells Ines she has a path to traverse and lead others along the way, saying that Ines needs to return, so they share a warm embrace. Ines wakes up in a tent with an IV line hooked to her hand, a bandage wrapped around her neck, and a monitor beeping nearby. A person with a medical coat on comes to her with a whiteboard and a marker, telling her that she's been cured. Ines immediately wants to ask more questions, but no sound comes out of her mouth. The doctor then writes that they performed a laryngectomy to cure her. They want her to join them in their search for others who might need their help, which Ines willingly accepts. Later, Ines wanders around the community of cured people, along with children that have yet to succumb to the virus. She finds the place full of peace and people working together, and she even greets the two blue meanies who helped her. Soon, someone taps her shoulder, and when she turns around, she sees that it's Bowie, who also underwent the surgery. Overjoyed, Ines hugs the lad, surprising Bowie, who eventually hugs her back. Days later,
later, the pair sit under a tree as Bowie strums his guitar. A lone traveler threatens them at gunpoint for their bag, which Ines tosses over. When the stranger approaches the bag, Ines cuts a rope, activating the trap, which strings the intruder up by her feet. Panicked, the lass pleads for them not to hurt her, so Ines writes down a message to ask if the traveler is hungry. That night, the small community gathers by the fire to peacefully listen to Bowie's guitar playing. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.